somewhere around 1000 BC. Eli was the high priest who handed his mantle to Samuel, who was the high priest who anointed Saul as Israel's first king and David as Israel's best king. This morning's Old Testament reading recounts the story of how Samuel was directed to anoint David as king. The rest, as they say, is salvation history. David became a great king. Solomon built an iconic temple. The kingdom of David, at least in and around Jerusalem, remained in place, politically speaking, for 150 years after the fall of the northern kingdom. Religiously speaking, the Davidic covenant, the Davidic kingdom, the Davidic dynasty, these remain central to salvation history ever since. Great powers would sweep over the Middle East and reach across the Western world. Babylon conquered Jerusalem, then gave way to Philip the Great and the Greeks, who gave way to the Romans, who gave way to the Spanish, who after the defeat of the Spanish Armada gave way to the British, who gradually gave way to America. But through it all, for both Israel and the church, the result was that the Davidic covenant would hold the key to the promised Messiah, who would descend from the line and lineage of David. Christianity would replace the law of Moses with the grace of God. The church would replace the significance of the Holy Land promise to Abraham with a view of salvation that was more spiritual in nature, with heaven ultimately being that holy place where all the blessings of God will be ours forever. So let's read our first lesson, which is written in the first book of Samuel, the 16th chapter, beginning with the first verse. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided for myself a king from among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came out to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab. And he thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have not chosen him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. The Lord looks not on outward appearance. The Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. But he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Here ends the first lesson. 